Hello, welcome back. In the last lecture, we talked about the difference between AND and OR. So front page here, um, I'm going to do a brief review of the difference between AND and OR, and then we'll add on. We have a table here. These are people from three different cities and their preferred mode of transportation. Part A, if one person is selected, find a probability that the person prefers travel by plane. Probability is going to be a fraction. We're talking about picking people here. So for the bottom, how many different people could I have, could I pick? That's really just asking for how many, how many people are there total. So let's add up these numbers. Six plus 15 plus 12 plus five plus nine plus 10 plus zero plus six plus 17. 80. Okay, 80 people total, so that's 80 people that I could pick from. That's the bottom. For the top, I want the people who prefer travel by plane. So how many people prefer travel by plane? These 12, these 10, and these 17. So 12 plus 10 plus 17. 39. Part B. If one person is selected, find a probability that the person is from Los Angeles, and prefers travel by plane. Keyword here is the word and. Okay, bottom is still gonna be everybody, which is 80. Up top, I want people from Los Angeles and uh, prefer travel by plane. And the word and, remember, means at the same time. So I want the people who are from LA and at the same time, they like plane. And as a tip, it should just be a single, uh, single box or a single number. So LA plane, LA plane. So these 17 people are from LA and at the same time, they like plane, 17. Part C, if one person is selected, find a probability that the person is from San Francisco or prefers travel by train. Keyword here is the word or. The bottom, same as before, is gonna be the total, which is 80. Up top. San Francisco or train, okay? So or means I'm gonna take the San Francisco people, the train people, and combine them and get a bigger set. And the way I usually do this is I'll take my San Francisco numbers, which are five, nine, and 10. And then I'll add on the train numbers, which is 15. The nine, I don't, I'm not gonna write again, Okay, because I already got the nine when I did the San Francisco number, so just the 15 and the six. Okay, so in addition, plus 15, plus six. Bottom is still 80. Up top, five plus nine plus 10. Plus 15 plus six. That's 45. Part D, if one person is selected, Find a probability that the person's favorite mode of transportation is not car. Okay, bottom is going to be everybody, which is 80. Okay, not car. Not car would be all the trains and all the planes. So 1596. And then 12, 10, 17. 69. Today we're gonna to talk about three, three new concepts. The first of which is called conditional probability. And this is the symbol for conditional probability. And what it means is, it's the probability of A The vertical line stands for the word given that B already occurred. Another way you can read this is probability of A given that we have additional information B. And once again, the uh, this vertical line stands for the word given. 
And that's the keyword uh, you'll, you'll be looking for. All right, so let's see how we compute uh, conditional probability with, with an example. Part E. If one person is selected, find a probability that the person prefers travel by car, given that the person is from San Francisco. Keyword I see here is the word given. And that indicates that this is going to be a conditional probability. For conditional probability questions, I do recommend using the symbol or the correct notation. So what we're looking for here is probability that the person prefers travel by car. So probability of car given, which is the vertical line, that the person is from San Francisco. So car given San Francisco. And the way you compute this, so let me back up a bit. Every question we've looked at so far, the bottom has been everybody, right? The bottom has always been the total. So anytime you see the word given and you're working with conditional probability, the bottom is not going to be the total anymore, okay? So we're looking for probability that the person prefers travel by car, given that we have additional information that the person is from San Francisco. Because we have additional information that the person is from San Francisco, we're just going to focus on the San Francisco numbers for the top and the bottom. And that's because we know we have additional information that the person is for sure from San Francisco. So we're just going to focus on the San Francisco numbers for the top and the bottom. So for the bottom, focusing just on the San Francisco numbers, how many are there total? Just the San Francisco numbers would be 5, 9, 10. So 5 plus 9 plus 10. The total is 24. So that's the bottom. And then still just focusing on the San Francisco numbers, how many prefer car? So just the San Francisco numbers, how many prefer car? 5. Okay, and that's it. Let's try another one. Part F. If one person is selected, find a probability that the person is from San Francisco, given that the person prefers travel by car. So once again, I see the word given. In symbols, I'm looking for San Francisco, given, so that's San Francisco, given car. Okay, anytime you have conditional probability, the given part, which is the second part, it's going to tell you what to focus on. So we're focusing on car for the top and the bottom. Okay, start with the bottom. Focusing just on car, how many are there total? So just on car, that would be 650. That's 11. That's the bottom. And then for the top, still focusing just on car, how many are from San Francisco? So just on focusing on car, how many are San Francisco? Five. Okay, so the, the point I want to make with part E and F is that car given San Francisco, and then the other way around, San Francisco given car, notice that you get different answers. Okay, so the order here does matter. All right, one more example, part G. If one person is selected, find a probability that the person is from Los Angeles, given that the person prefers travel by train. So uh, once again, I see the word given. Okay, in symbols, I want Los Angeles, so LA, given train. So what numbers should, should I focus on here? Okay, we're, we're focusing on the given part, which is the, the second part. So we should be focusing on train for the top and the bottom. So focusing, so for the bottom, focusing just on train numbers, how many are there total? So just train numbers, 1596. What's 1596? 15, 15 plus 9 plus 6. It's 30. Okay, so focusing just on the train numbers, the total is 30. And then still focusing just on the train numbers, how many are LA? Just train numbers, how many are LA? Six.
The second new thing we're going to talk about is called the multiplication rule for probabilities. I'm going to write down a formula, but don't worry about uh, this formula too much. So the multiplication rule for probabilities is a formula for calculating probability of, of A. I'm going to write and then B. And the way you calculate probability of A and then B is probability of A, probability of B given A, and then you multiply. That's why it's called the multiplication rule. So this basically says that to find a probability of A and then B, you can kind of do it separately. You do A, and then you do B, given additional information that A already occurred. And then the key point here is that you multiply. So don't worry about the formula too much. I'm going to show you how, how to use this formula in an example. So part H. If two people are randomly, randomly selected, what is the probability that the first person prefers to travel by plane and the second person also prefers to travel by plane? All right. So up to now, every question we've looked at has said if one person is selected. The new thing for uh, in th on this page is that we are selecting two people, two people, three people, three people, so multiple people. And the way we're going to use this multiplication rule is to select two people. One way you can do that is to select one person and then select a second person. And what this is telling me to do is we can do it separately and then just multiply the, the two fractions. All right, so I'm selecting two people, which means I'll need two fractions. And let me write down what the first person is and what the first second person is. First person, I want to be prefers to travel by plane. So first person is plane. The second person also prefers to travel by plane. So second person is also plane. Okay. The first fraction is just like a regular uh, probability question that, that we've talked about before. So for the first fraction, the bottom is going to be everybody. So that's 80. Is it 80? Yeah, it's 80. And then for the top, I want how many plain people? So plain, plain would be 12, 10, 17. What's 12, 10, 17? Thirty-nine. Okay, so that's that's the first person, right? First person prefers uh, probably of, of the first person prefer travel by plane. Now, for the second person, this is where we have to take into account that the first person was already picked. Okay, so for the second fraction, the bottom, if we take into account that we already picked one person uh, for the first slot. We don't have the full 80 anymore, right? We have one less person, so we're down to 79. And then for the top, I want the plain people, okay? We also have to take into account that we also already picked a plain person for the first lot, so I don't have the full, um, so 12, 10, 17 is 39. I don't have the full 39 because I already used one plain person for the first lot which means I'm down by 1 to 38. Okay, and that's how you use this multiplication rule. All right, so let's try a couple more examples. Part I. If two people are randomly selected, okay, that already tells me that I need two fractions. What is the probability that the first person is a person from LA who prefers travel by train? Okay, so first person is... LA who prefers travel by train. So LA train. Second person is from San Francisco. Okay. First fraction, uh, the bottom is going to be everybody, which was 80. For the top, I want LA train people. So LA train, LA train, six. Second person, for the bottom, I already chose one person, so I should be down by 1 to 79. For the top, San Francisco. San Francisco would be 5910. 5910 is 24, I think. 
Okay, 24. Now, is it 24 or do we have to reduce it to by one, like in part H, to 23? So in in the part H, the reason why I had to reduce is because I used a plain person in the first slot, right? But here, I haven't used any San Francisco people yet, right? The first slot was LA train. So I don't have to reduce it by one because I haven't used any San Francisco numbers yet. So I should have the full, what do we say it was? 24. Okay, make sure you understand why in part H I had to reduce and in part I, I did not have to reduce. Okay, so in part I, the second slot was San Francisco. And if we look at the first slot, we, we didn't use any San Francisco numbers. In part H, the second slot, slot is plain. If we look back, we did use plain already, so I had to reduce by one. Part J, if three people are randomly selected, so already I know I should have three fractions that are multiplied together, what's the probability that the first person is a person from San Francisco who prefers travel by plane? Okay, first person is going to be San Francisco plane. The second person is a person from Los Angeles who prefers travel by plane. So second person is LA plane. The third person prefers travel by plane. So third person is plane, no, no city attached. The first fraction is going to be, the bottom is going to be everybody, which is 80. Up top, I want SF plane. How many SF plane? SF plane, 10. Second fraction, okay. Because I chose one person already, the bottom is going to be down by 1 to 79. And let's go ahead and do the, the bottom of the third fraction. Down by 1 again, 78. All right. The uh, second fraction here, I want LA plane. So LA plane. LA plane would be... Six. Now the question is, is it six or do I have to reduce by one? So LA plane, if we look back to the first lot, did I use LA plane yet? I have not, right? I used SF plane, but I haven't used exactly LA plane yet. So I should have the full six. Third fraction is just plane, no city attached. So plane, would be 12, 10, 17. So 12, 10, 17. One second. LA plane is not six. LA plane is 17. So LA plane is 17. Third fraction, plane, so plane, no city, would be all the planes. So 12, 10, 17. So 12 plus 10 plus 17. That's 39. Okay, 39. Or do we have to reduce? So have we used plane numbers? We did, right? I used the plane here, and I used the plane here. So we actually used two planes already, which means I should be down by two. So the total was 39. So down by two, this would be 37. Okay, so make sure you understand why it's 37 and not 39. Part K. If three people are randomly selected, so I know it's going to be three fractions. What is the probability that the first person is a person from Sacramento who prefers travel by car? So first person is Sacramento car. Sac car. Second person is a person from LA who prefers travel by train, so LA train. Third person prefers travel by car, so car with no specific city. First fraction, bottom is going to be everybody, so that's going to be 80. Sac car, Sacramento car, Sacramento car, 6. Second fraction, 
the bottom I should be down by one, which is 79. And then let's do the third fraction. I should be down by one again for the bottom. That's 78. Second fraction, LA train. LA train would be LA train six. I forgot to, to, to talk through that. Is it six or do I have to reduce by one? So did I use any LA train yet? No, right? First slot was sat car. So I haven't used any LA train yet, which means I should have the full six. Last for action, car. Car is six, five, zero. That's 11. Is it 11 or do I have to reduce? And the question you should ask is, have you used any car yet? I have. I use one car, right? So I should be down by one to 10. So make sure you understand why it's 10 and not uh, 11. And also make sure you understand why for part K for the last slot, I reduced by one. Whereas for J, the last slot, I had to reduce by two from 39 to 37. In J, I used two planes already, which is why I reduced by two. In K, I only used one car, which means I reduced by one. The third new concept we're going to talk about today is solving at least one problems. Uh, before I talk about solving at least one problems, I have to talk about complement. Complements we talked about already when we talked about set theory. So in set theory, the complement of a set are all the things that are not in that set. And for probability, it's going to be something similar. Say I have an event E. And E stands for it rains today. What would be the complement of E? The symbol for complement is the same one we use for, for sets. It's going to be E with a superscript of C. If E means it rains today, then E complement means it does not rain today. And now let's talk about some probability. Say I know that the probability of it raining today is 0 0.2. And that's as, as a decimal. If you uh, prefer percents, uh, 0 0.2 as a percent would be move the decimal two to the right. It'd be 20%. So if you know that the probability of it raining today is 20%, what's the probability of it not raining? So if you know the probability of it raining today is 20%, the probability of it not raining would be the rest, which is 80%. And what math did we do to get this 80%? We took 20%, right, and did 100% minus 20% is 80%, right? That's in percent form. In decimal form, what you would do is you would take 100% as a decimal will be 1, minus a 20% as a decimal will be 0 0.2, and you'll get 0.8, okay, which is 80% in decimal form. So the point here is that if I know the probability of E, the probability of E complement is going to be 1 minus the probability of regular E. Okay, so we'll need that idea. The probability of the complement is one minus the probability of regular E. And it also works the other way, other way around. The probability of regular E is one minus the probability of the complement. All right, at least one problems. Let's actually read part L. If three people are randomly selected, find a probability of, of at least one person, that at least one person is from Sacramento. What does at least one mean? We're talking about selecting three people, so at least one means one or more. So it could mean one, it could mean two, it could mean three. And that's the problem with solving at least one problems directly, because it could mean one, it could mean two, it could mean three in this case, which means you have to take into account each of those situations separately and then combine the answers. So instead of solving at least one problems directly, 
we're going to do it by looking at the complements because it's easier. So what is the complement of at least one? Okay, so let me uh, use an example to, to help you figure out what the complement is. I'm going to write down some numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which of, which of those numbers are at least 1? At least 1 means 1 or more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. All of those numbers are at least 1. Okay, which means if you're solving at least one problem directly, you would have to take into account one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, all of those things, and then combine your answers. What is the complement? What number is not underlined in red? Zero. Okay. So the complement of at least one is zero. I'm going to write none. All right, so now we're ready to write down the main idea. So the main idea here is that to find a probability of at least one, we're not gonna do it directly because that's hard. So instead of finding a probability of at least one, I'm gonna do one minus the probability of the complement, which is none. And this is the idea we're going to use on any problem that says at least one. All right, so let's try an example. Part L. If three people are randomly selected, find a probability that at least one person is from Sacramento. So keyword is at least one. I'm looking for at least one sack. Which is going to be the same thing as doing one minus the probability of none from SAC. So uh, I'm going to write none SAC. So instead of doing at least one directly, we're going to do the right side, which is one minus the probability that none of them are from SAC. So one minus. Now, we're talking about three people, so I'm going to need three fractions here for the none SAC part. I'm selecting three people. What does it mean for none of them to be from SAC? That means that the first person is not from SAC, second person is not from SAC, third person is not from SAC. So all three are not from SAC. So not SAC. And then you'll just find the fractions for not SAC, not SAC, not SAC. So once again, three people, none of them from SAC means that not SAC, not SAC, not SAC. All right, so first fraction, the bottoms should be everybody. Everybody uh, was what? Everybody's 80. And then let's actually fill the bottom for the other fraction. So 80, and then the second person, because we chose one person already, that's going to reduce down to 79, and then 78. Okay. First fraction top, I want not sack. So how many not sack? Not sack would be 5, 9, 10. plus 0, plus 6, plus 17. 47. Second person, I also want to be not sack. And because I already chose one person not sack already, for the second blank, um, I should be down by 1 to 46. And then down again to 45. And so the answer you're going to enter is going to be that. So make sure don't 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 forget the the 1 minus. So 1 minus 47 over 80 times 46 over 79 times 45 over 78. Part M. If three people are randomly selected, find a probability that at least one, so once again I see the word at least one person prefers travel by train. Okay, I'm looking for a probability 
at least one train. And the way we're going to do at least one is we're going to do one minus none, none train. So this is one minus, we're talking about three people. So three fractions. Okay, three people, none of them train means not train, not train, not train. Uh, first fraction, the bottom is going to be everybody, which was 80. And then it goes down, right? 80, 79, 78. Now, first fraction, I went not train. How many not train? Not train would be the cars, 650. And then the planes, 12, 10, 17. 6, 5, 0, 12, 10, 17. That's 50. Second fraction, I also want to be not train, which means I have to reduce by 1 because I used not train already. So we're down to 49 and then 48. Okay, so keep in mind that even though we're looking for probability of at least one train, on the right side, for the fractions, we're looking at not train, not train, not train. That's because we have this one minus, so it's one minus the complement. That's why, even though we're looking for train, you're actually doing not trains. N, if three people are randomly selected, find a probability that all three prefer travel by plane. Now, I threw this one in to, just to point out that you're only doing one minus none when you have at least one problems. For n, I don't see the word at least one anywhere, right? If three people are randomly selected, find a probability that all three prefer travel by plane. I don't see the word uh, at least one. So if you don't see the word at least one, then you do it the regular way. So three people, three fractions. I want all three planes, so plane, plane, plane. And you, you do this the same way you did it on the previous page. So the bottom for the first fraction will be everybody, which is 80. Um, it's going to go down to 79, 78. First fraction, I want plane. Plane is 12, 10, 17. Pretty sure that's 39. And then another plane. So that means I should be down by 1 to 38. And then again, another plane to 37.